Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our fall 2018 OER degree community meeting. This is Una Daly from the Community College Consortium for OER. And thank you all for coming. Um, today's uh, um, meeting is around um, the year two research highlights, which uh, Richard uh, will be sharing with us, and um, also, of course, our calendar. And then uh, we're going to hear from five of our grantee colleges on how they create student awareness strategies. So let me just start our slideshow. All right, there's the usual suspects. Um, I already gave you the agenda. Oh, and at the end, we are going to talk just a little bit about, um, you know, opportunities for conferences in the spring. There's still some that are open uh, for proposals. And um, then we're going to talk, uh, uh, we're going to have, um, well, I'm going to talk to you about case studies. And those of you who still would like to do one before the end of the year, we'd be very excited to have those. All right, I just wanted to give you a couple of updates from the field and um, please, you know, jump in if you have any questions here. We're a pretty small group this morning, so please uh, don't hesitate. It's open access week and I wonder if any of you are doing anything special at your um, college for that. Um, it's, it's part of the bigger open community. Um, you know, beyond just open education. So um, open access is very much kind of one of our sister uh, movements, if you will. And um, we just posted something on our community email list asking people to let us know if they're using open access journals and which ones they would recommend. Uh, so if they're using those in their classroom. So if you get a chance, respond to that. Uh, Quill sent that out and we'll be, um, posting that as a blog as a blog post uh, later on um, for other folks. Um, I don't know how many of you um, were part of the Department of Ed um, open textbook pilot submissions, but that was announced. Um, and Libra Text, which is based at UC Davis, but has um, grantee participants around the country did receive that award. Uh, and it was a single award, which was rather unusual. Uh, so they got the entire $5 million. Um, and the exciting thing, though, I think for um, those of us who aren't participating in that, uh, that round is that there is another one that was just approved uh, for the same amount of money. And they plan on um, doing 20 allocations, which would be uh, up to 250,000 each for uh, 20 folks to participate. So we're waiting to hear more. I think we probably won't hear about that till the new year. Um, another interesting thing is the Open Textbook Network, OTN. I think some of you participate in that work, network. Uh, they launched a publishing curriculum. So, and there's a link here. Um, there's a Canvas course you can, um, that anyone can go in and take a look at. Um, and um, if you've got faculty who are publishing on your campus or want to publish, it might be a great uh, thing to refer them to. And finally, there was many great sessions at the Open Ed Conference uh, just two weeks ago. We were, <laughs> we were talking about that as people were coming in earlier. Um, we did a, um, a Google Sheet with the list of um, slides, I'm sorry, the list of presentations that were ATD based. Um, I have gone back to the website, the Open Ed Conference website. I've had some trouble uh, retrieving the slides. Uh, from presentations, and I don't know if anyone else has had that. Um, they're probably in the process of fixing that. In the meanwhile, there um, we had somebody put out on our community email list, please submit your slides. And so we'll be um, we'll be consolidating that list of slides that were submitted and also creating a um, a big posting so people can go there as well uh, to see the uh, the slides that have been contributed through the through the through the community college um, consortium. But um, interested in hearing if anyone else has um, ha has had any luck getting um, access to those presentations from Open Ed. All right, I think I'm going to turn this over now to Fran and Richard. And Fran and Richard, I'll move the slides for you if that's okay. Unless you would, I could give you control if you prefer. No, that's okay. Okay. Um, Hello, everybody. Um, so I just want to go over a couple of things for the rest of this calendar year. 
Um, so for the, right now, I think you all have gotten communication from SRI about the faculty survey. Uh, so you should be getting uh, responses back to them as soon as you can. Um, next year in 2019, there'll be another data collection from SRI and RPK group um, in February. And then later on in the month of February is our big dream conference. And um, you all got an email from me a while back asking you to submit proposals. I know that a lot of you did, so thank you. Uh, we're actually going through those proposals this week and next. So I'll get a chance to see um, all the grantees that sent things in. Um, the 20 by 20 presentations are short um, presentations. They're sort of like a Pecha Kucha style, um, engaging just a couple of minutes per slide. Those presentations are due, uh, those proposals, I'm sorry, are due November 16th. So if you're interested in still coming to DREAM and maybe doing a smaller quote unquote session, you can apply to do one of those. Um, on the 28th of February is when the final report will be due. And I'm gonna be sending out the template for the report before the holidays. So the holidays mean the winter, the winter holidays. So before Christmas and New Year, you'll get that template so you can have a good amount of time to complete it and uh, turn it back in the end of February. Um, May 30th through June 1st is gonna be our very first teaching and learning summit. So we're excited about this and OER is gonna be one of the strands. We're thinking about having three strands or three tracks and OER is gonna be one of those. So if you're interested um, in knowing more about that, we'll be sending info about that out as well, as long, uh, along with the website to register and just learn more about the different areas that we're gonna focus on. Um, and then in September of 2019 is when everything completely wraps up and the final research and evaluation report will be released. Um, you all know that we released the second year report. Richard's gonna talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, at Open Ed, and that was super exciting because we got a lot of press traction. We got a lot of Twitter uh, traction. So thank you for everybody who was able to share out and read the report and participate in the data collection. Next slide. So one thing that I um, sent out when I sent this last report out to everybody is to ask you for all of your artifacts. So if there are artifacts that you've been collecting, things you've presented, um, any strategies, any PD materials, anything like that, any reports you've written, articles, if you can submit those things to this link, we'll email this back out to everyone as well, um, but if you can submit them here, that'd be great because we wanna have a repository of everything that you all have done and created in addition to the actual course content. Uh, so this is sort of the supplemental materials that you all have. Next slide. So as I mentioned, DREAM is coming out. So that's ATD's huge conference. It's the 15th anniversary. And since this will, 2019 will technically be the last year of the grant, we wanna make sure that we highlight all the grantees. We're gonna have a grantee panel. Uh, and we would love to have participation from as many of you as possible. Um, and if you are attending DREAM, um, send me a note. If you're planning to attend DREAM, send me a note um, because we wanna make sure that we include you in the panel. The registration uh, has gone live, so it's on the ATD website, and I think it's right on the, the banner where you can click it and select to come to the conference. Um, and then also at the conference, we're gonna have an OER reception for all of the grantees. We normally have had this in the past. Um, we have to decide on whether or not this is gonna be open to everybody or just the grantees that are there. Uh, that's a little bit up in the air, but we really wanna celebrate all the work you've done and especially recognize you if you've been chosen to give an actual concurrent session as well. Next slide, I think is now the report. So Richard, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Yeah, so, hi, thank you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you should have uh, seen the, the findings from the year two of our um, OER degree initiative. And just to give you a little um, background on this, the, the original plan uh, was not for was for this to be an internal report um, for a number of reasons, uh, but after you know reading the initial kind of uh, report from June um, and talking with with uh, the researchers at SRI and our PK group, um, we we thought it would be it's really important to to if we could 
um, to kind of release it publicly. So we spent, actually we decided very quickly around August to do that and, and pulled it together and updated the data, uh, which, uh, which I think um, helped make us a little bit more confident uh, about just the findings in the report. The, the data sets were a little bit more robust. Um, so, um, you know, I'm not going to go in, in too much detail. Hopefully you've read it, but I think, um, you know, we're, I think we're pretty, we're pretty pleased um, with, with what the, the findings of the report. Um, so, so, I, so I kind of have maybe put these things in two or three buckets. First is just um, the student impacts um, seem pretty positive to me. Um, when you look at how uh, the impact of these courses on, on students, both from an affordability standpoint, like how the uh, cost savings uh, impacted students and allowed them uh, additional access in order to uh, pay bills and things like that, particularly students who are Pell students or um, underrepresented uh, students. Um, it, was, it was pretty encouraging. And, and as, as well as the students' perceptions of OER, um, that was pretty encouraging too. It was pretty, was pretty positive, positive, positive. positive. I'm getting some I'm echo. Getting some echo. Maybe folks can put yourself on mute. Um, and uh, the uh, the thing that maybe was of concern was um, students weren't aware of the OER courses for, for the most part. I see I see why that is. Um, I think that might be a little different now. I think colleges are pr promoting their courses a little bit more, but uh, many of the students didn't even know. Uh, until they were taking the survey that they were in, a, in an OER course. The other interesting uh, kind of bucket is around the costs. And uh, I think there's a, a, you know, for me, a raised eyebrow when I saw uh, the, uh, the cost for course development. Um, uh, on the one hand, we, we've never had this kind of information before, this kind of detailed information on how much uh, instructional time is involved when you calculate in faculty pay percentage of their pay and incentives and stipends and release time and, and all the things, all the kind of elements that, that are actually contributing to developing an OER course. Um, and, and so the, the, the costs were higher than, than I anticipated, particularly with, uh, with teams of, uh, of faculty, it was almost twice as much, which is, uh, which is I think, uh, uh, even more surprising, uh, but maybe not. Maybe it's not surprising. But again, if these kind of initial findings are things that we can we can really address, uh, really think about um, ways to help colleges really uh, better uh, kind of reduce those costs and be um, kind of more uh, maybe more efficient or um, kind of approach it differently to, to lower those those costs. But but when you come look at the student outcomes compared to the costs, which you can do something about without affecting the student outcomes, I think. Again, the report, um, report was pretty positive. Um, and uh, I also, uh, I saw, also think it's really interesting that we now have, and we hadn't before, a way of calculating costs for, um, for uh, you know, these uh, kind of figuring out if you're an institution. And, you know, a lot of institutions use $100 uh, as a as a kind of a, a marker for cost savings, but but uh, this report kind of gives a little bit more um, uh, detailed and uh, you know uh, maybe more complex way of of figuring out what um, what the uh, what the cost savings might be for your institution. So we're hoping to put out a, some kind of a widget of some sort to to help um, with uh, with uh, colleges do that. I don't know what's on these slides. I'm just talking off the top of my head. So if there's, is there another slide? Yeah, I think I talked about that. Um, let's see what the next one says. See if I missed anything. To get it moved forward. Let me move the slide forward. Okay, um, 
so so uh, anyway, so so I think the report was was pretty positive. Um, again, if you or anyone has questions about it uh, or didn't receive it for some reason, uh, let us know. But uh, uh, but uh, that's the that's the gist of it. And we're hoping to again present uh, kind of maybe the um, collected findings from the, the two reports uh, at Dream um, to our kind of a broader audience. So thanks. Turning it back over to you, Una. Una, I think you're muted still. Thank you very much, Fran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that works a little better. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that um, it is on the slides, uh, the, the link there, and I think somebody's going to put it in um, the report as well. Um, and I, I just wanted to follow up on that last bullet on the slide about students working more than 20 hours per, per week are less likely to be aware of other OER courses at their campus. And I don't think that this is particularly surprising um, that those students are a little less connected to what's happening on campus, but it, um, it's, it's, you know, an opportunity to realize that those students need extra outreach and are really very much the students that we're trying to target with these OER degrees. So um, figuring out how to do that, I think, will be a challenge, but also a real positive. All right. Um, so next, um, I wanted to uh, introduce the topic of creating student awareness of OER degree pathways. Um, and as Richard mentioned, this is this continues to be a challenge. Um, and in the report that you folks submitted at the end of June, um, only four of the colleges reported that they had a full student communications plan in place. Um, and so it's, I know that many of you have been working on it since then, but um, so it's definitely an area that um, people are, are, are working on. And so we have some excellent folks to share with us today um, about what they've started. And, and I know I, I approached a number of you and you said, well, you know, we're still in the beginning. And I said, well, this is, this is great because um, I think it, it, we're, many are in the same boat and and hearing what the initial efforts are and how those are working out is going to be really helpful. I also put a link here to a webinar that we did um, with Lyda um, Kaiser um, from Lord Fairfax Community College, and I see that she's online today as well. We did a webinar on creating student awareness of OER in general back in March of 2017, and I went back and reviewed it uh, earlier this week, and Lida did an excellent job in, in identifying your audience um, to, you know, the and so I, I highly recommend uh, you go back and take a look at her slides um, or listen to the webinar. And, and the link is here on this page uh, to get other insights. Even though we weren't specifically talking about degree pathways at that point, I think much of it's um, um, really helpful. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over now to Jean Amaral. Uh, from Borough of Manhattan Community College to talk about the work that they're doing to help students um, find out about these programs and enroll in them. Hi all, thanks for this opportunity to share our experience. I'm mostly gonna be talking about our failures, actually, <laughs> um, because we've been fairly unsuccessful in our efforts, um, which I am uh, framing uh, within the rule of seven. So many of you may be aware of this marketing um, theorem or whatever um, we might call it that says that for people to act um, in relation to something that you're trying to engage them with, they have to encounter it in seven different spaces um, or at seven different times. And so I have the seven uh, different areas that we've tried to reach students in. And again, it's been a really mixed bag and we continue to struggle with this. Um, to give context, we have 27,000 students um, 
And uh, as, as I'm sure it's with all of your campuses, uh, with commuter students coming and going, uh, we also offer classes from 7 a.m. till midnight, um, five days a week, and then we offer classes on weekends as well. So uh, we have this really extended calendar, um, and it continues to be a challenge. But at any rate, so some of the things we are doing, um, we certainly have monitors, the electronic monitors around the campus that many of you do as well, I'm sure. So we've got the e-signage up. And we don't have a clear indication if uh, students are actually paying attention to that. And of course, it's cycling through many different announcements on that. And so part of it's are they in the right place at the right time to actually um, see the ZTC or the OER and does it make sense to them? I'm not sure. Um, I know we use some um, Our electronic signage we use what was designed by CUNY Central for all of the CUNY campuses that are involved um, with OER work um, And I'm not sure it's hard to tell if uh, the language we're using is reaching students. So we could probably do some work there to figure out um, Is that drawing their eye and that do they actually know and do they follow up? Um, it's really hard to find language also that students immediately get it. So we go back and forth between OER um, and zero textbook cost um, in terms of trying to work with students. We certainly know that zero textbook cost has more meaning. Um, it was actually our student government association that encouraged us to use student textbook cost when we were, uh, zero textbook cost when we were talking to students. Um, we also have flyers uh, and, um, oh, these have been put up on the bulletin boards across all of our buildings, um, but we're also handing them out in various locations. Um, and these are flyers that we share with other departments. So they're flyers that go to the advisors, that go to the faculty, um, that go to student affairs and student activities. Um, and we also use those flyers um, in our library instruction. So whenever we're given classes, um, we're actually distributing those flyers as well. And we teach between two and 300 classes a semester. Um, so there's a fair amount of folks that we're reaching in that way. And a lot of times we'll ask, you know, have you heard of um, this beforehand? And often they will say no. Um, so we are reaching um, more folks there that, than, that don't know than do know. Often it's just one or two students in the class. Um, unless they're actually in a class that is zero textbook cost and then most of them are aware that it is at that point. We also do tabling. We've done over the past couple of semesters, we try to do one or two tabling um, events a semester. Um, so with cupcakes works really well. We have um, food to attract them over to the table because it is hard to get students to stop. Um, we were finding this out today when we didn't have cupcakes. We're tabling this week. Um, and this week we have Halloween candy, but it's not the draw that cupcakes usually are. And so we're finding that students, um, it can be hard to get them to stop as they're walking between their classes, even asking them, do you pay too much to text for textbooks or do you want to pay less for textbooks? We still get students saying, no, thank you, and keep on wandering by. So we have found that having a little food at the table can help bring them over. Um, and so we do, again, these tabling events uh, at least once a semester, if not twice. Um, providing some kind of food and today we're actually or this week we're actually gathering stories from them which I know many campuses have done and I think it's a great idea where we're asking them how much they're spending on textbooks and what would they have spent that money on elsewhere um, and that effort is connected um, to our efforts to actually finally um, get with our SGA our student government association so you'll see they're not on this list because we have been unsuccessful at reaching and connecting with our student government association um, ours is pretty locked down by our sort of student affairs and student activities folks we don't have easy access to those um, to the senators and to the president um, but we're um, trying to get it in with them and we're also working with NYPIRG um, and so uh, part of the tabling was to start getting some data from the students that NYPIRG and SGA could potentially use maybe to start a petition, but also to share with faculty in a faculty senate meeting. Um, and we're actually running into some difficulties there um, with uh, just the, politi po the politics of the situation. So, um, you know, we didn't necessarily reach out to all the people we maybe should have. So we've gotten some questions from different people. And we're, and it's also not clear to us politically where NYPIRG stands on our campuses. Some campuses are very supportive and administration is very supportive. You know, I think ours might be, but I also think it might be um, a, a more political situation with NYPIRG in the mix. Um, 
but we certainly hopefully will have more news at the end of the semester. Um, we're hoping that if we are able to do a petition and have SGA lead that petition drive that we can deliver it to the faculty senate um, in the spring um, to create more awareness and to actually increase the number of courses on our campus. Um, so the last two uh, touch points for us are through the advisors and the faculty. And these are really big, of course, because the faculty see the students more than anybody else. Um, and usually most, if not all of our students do meet with an advisor during registration. So um, we really try to get the information out to those folks um, as a way uh, to make sure that students um, are being advised well in terms of their textbook cost courses. Um, and that's hard to monitor in terms of we're, we're hoping that we get the information to them and then they're using it and anecdotally we hear that they are, um, but we haven't found a way to, um, to, to, to determine whether or not they're um, using the information as much as we would like them to and working with the students. Um, a couple of provisos with that. Um, one of the reasons, one thing we've struggled, we haven't actually um, promoted the, the OER degree because we're just finishing up a lot of our courses this semester, and so there hasn't been necessarily a whole degree to promote. Um, but we are promoting the OER and the zero textbook cost courses. But one of the difficulties for us is we have over 4,000 sections of courses, and we're slowly approaching um, a number that makes uh, sense and can be useful for students. Um, and I know we talked about this, or ATD talked about this in the first report of the thin pathways and not having enough sections of those general ed. So um, we're also a little nervous about, you know, talking to students about this program and then they go in and nothing fits their schedule. So those folks who work more than 20 hours a week. Um, so we're trying to, uh, while doing the outreach to student and making them aware, we're actually using that outreach as more of an opportunity to get them to do advocacy because we still don't feel we have enough sections that we're adequately, adequately serving students. And we feel like there might be a little false advertising in this for many of our students who try to sign up for a ZTC course um, and are unable to fit anything into their schedules. So um, our outreach to educate them about that is closely tied to advocacy and trying to advocate for more courses. So that's what BMCC has been up to. Wow. <laughs> And Jean was one of those people who said, you know, I'm not sure I have anything to say um, a, a few days ago. And this, this, was, this was wonderful, really, um, really insightful. Um, and there was a couple of comments um, also in the chat window if you want to take a look, um, Jean. Um, yeah, um, I, I did see some coming up, but unfortunately I'm, I'm of an age where I can't read and talk at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I thought maybe you just... Um, you know. Yeah, I'm scanning right now. I don't know if, there, if anybody had a specific question. I'm happy certainly to take it as I scan through to see if there was one there. Uh, Quill was asking just about the timing on when you do your tabling. Is it during registration or is it... Yeah, yeah, so definitely. So this week is registration for us. Um, so we do try to either do it just before or during registration, absolutely. I think Lida had a point about um, having students evaluate OER as um, potentially part of library instruction as well, um, be, you know, digital literacy and so forth. Sure. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to do that, but I know certainly people are, and I believe our sister campus, LaGuardia, has a program that they've run where they've had students be uh, doing evaluations as well. When you mentioned 4,000 4, OER or ZTZ sections? So that's 4,000 sections of total classes, and we probably have 400 sections. So we think there's probably 10% of um, sections that have been gotcha. converted okay. at this point, yeah. Okay. No, that 4,000 sections would be dream. Be right. I was going <laughs> to say, was that all beauty? Or was that, or that was, but those are BMC. So yeah, that's the BMCC number. So we offer over 4,000 sections of courses, and then we probably have four to 500 sections that are um, OER or ZTC. Well, that's 10% is a, a good start. That's... Yeah, we feel like, it, we do absolutely feel like it's a good start, but at the same time, that means a lot of students are not going to fit their schedule. And what we find is students actually start with, is there something that fits my schedule? Um, so a lot of them say, you know, I don't look at the textbook first. I'm just looking for a course that fits my schedule because I have so much that I'm juggling. So mm -hmm. we definitely need the gen ed, the high enrollment gen ed courses to be, we want to flip them totally. So we want to go from, however, you know, we might have 10 sections in a, 
100 um, section course, we want to flip the entire course. And so we're looking at different ways that we might achieve that. That's certainly one of our goals. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jean. And Thank you. Um, Really appreciate that. And next, we're going to move on to Cheryl Huff at Germana, Germana Community College in, in Virginia. And um, I'll move this along to you, uh, Cheryl, and just let me know when you want me to move the slides. Okay, great. Thank you, Anna. Um, wow, Jean, that's really impressive uh, what you've got going on. You're way ahead of us with the cupcakes, for sure, and the tabling. Um, BMCC used to be my neighbor on Chambers Street. I lived on Warren Street just around the corner, so I have a fondness for your institution. Um, so we are looking at this as um, something that we're going to ramp up like as soon as the grant is in. Um, we intentionally waited to do very much of anything beyond really working very closely with faculty to spread awareness uh, and knowing that uh, full-time faculty at least serve as advisors but we've also had tremendous buy-in from adjuncts in helping us develop courses and we know that they are often in contact with students in ways that uh, kind of alternative students uh, coming in at night um, coming in on saturdays so that's been a big help and one of the things we've started doing is when we hire full-time faculty being sure that they're OER uh, oriented and that they're willing to um, help us grow the program in OER. Um, so we are now sort of looking at what we have established, which one of the things that we got going was um, an attribute. Richard started the attribute at the VCCS a couple years ago, but actually implementing it on each campus was kind of a challenge because even though we all use SIS, it doesn't work the same way at every college. The schedule isn't built the same way. Um, we ended up with uh, a system that's not beautiful. They can't search OER classes from the first screen. It takes a little bit of a click, and you can see, click here to search classes. They have to type in OER. I know that <laughs> that's, does not sound that challenging, but anytime you have to ask students to go an extra step in terms of registration, especially if they're new students, or they're not working directly with their advisor. So they do have to search in that way. And um, basically what it does is just pop up all the classes that are listed on our schedule. That's been kind of the problem, and that's why I say, ah, there's the rub, because um, the problem is somebody has to always be on the notes in our schedule to be sure that every OER class is listed in there or it won't show up when they search here. Um, and part of the problem, if any of you have been department chairs or involved in scheduling, um, things change at the very last minute, staffing changes. So you might have one instructor doing English 111, completely OER, but then that instructor gets switched to a different section, a book's been ordered for that section. It becomes really complicated. Uh, when it happens at the last minute. So we're still working always with our registrar and our other people who get involved in this process to streamline this a little bit. But we do, the good news is we do have the access to uh, the, the search capability. I think go to the next slide, Una. Right, so we, we are kind of gearing up for this. We've had busy years at Germana because we have a new president. She's been here 15 months. We just had her very busy um, inauguration. So the marketing staff was pretty much out of the loop for a while. Um, we also just finished the SACS review and the QEP process happening. We're hiring a new uh, CEDL director. Uh, but their primary focus is going to be on the QEP for the next five years and probably based learning. So that's one of the things we're working with faculty to get them to understand how PBL and OER hook up. I'm sure we could come up with a great acronym if we joined up with those two acronyms together. But um, so we're looking at outreach to admins. We've put, I put grassroots as the last bullet here, but really grassroots has sort of been the whole picture. Um, we find that working with department chairs, or I'm meeting with department chairs next uh, next week at their monthly meeting to talk about how uh, we can both spread the word out to students and how we can spread the word out to our faculty to keep growing this. Now that we have this uh, 
really tidy groundswell of two degrees, two, two C degrees, science and business. Um, I feel like we can start marking them as degrees. But our Edmonds have been very, very busy with SACs and a new president and a lot of restructuring. Um, the OER committee got put on hold, which was a little sad. Um, but so we're kind of looking at it as finding ways to bring the OER out to everybody who's a stakeholder. Uh, and I like the idea of the table with cupcakes because one of the things we haven't done much is to work with students, but the timing wasn't quite right. Um, we do have a cable TV show that I'm a co-host of, so we're going to be doing an episode, uh, at least a, you know, an interview about that, which goes out into the local community. It's spread our reach pretty much all over our whole service area. So we're excited about that. I've talked about uh, OER on the show before when we first got the degree, but now we can actually talk about the degrees. Um, we have a local radio show that is really friendly to the college and helps us get things out on, on his and Ted Schubel's show. Um, we always have ad campaigns in local movie theaters, papers, billboards. Uh, so we'll be spreading the word there too. We're also looking at how we can bring this to dual enrollment and the high school recruiters. And I think the high school recruiters do do focus groups. And so we're looking at how we can develop focus groups. I know that Anita Walls at Virginia Tech had a lot of luck with student focus groups and spreading the word through student organizations. So we're going to try all of those things. And we'll let you know. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were a co host on a cable TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. I, I do it with uh, our Spanish and Italian professor, Ashley Anglin, who is secretly a, a local theater buff. And um, she's really better at it than I am. But we have a great time. And we get to meet really super people. And we get to publicize a lot of things that are happening around uh, Germana and at the BCCS level. So it's, it's, it's very useful. Yeah, it's a, I think it's another great avenue for outreach. Um, there's a, there's a question in the chat window, but I'm Cheryl and Quill and Sally. I'm going to ask you to save that one to the end since I've got three more speakers. It's a it's a question I hear more and more frequently. Um, so go, go ahead and chat, and it, and we can speak to it at the, at the end after I've given everyone a chance, if that's okay. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All righty. Let's see, next up is Sally Heilstad from Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Great, thank you, Una. Can everybody, can you hear me okay? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, great. I went from one webinar to this one and I was hoping that it all was seamless. Um, excellent, well, thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, we struggled initially and everything that I'm gonna share is not ideal um, at this point either, but we really did struggle getting um, awareness built, not just among students, but the broader college community. And part of that was challenges um, that both Jean um, and Cheryl shared. So what, what the main things that we focused on to kind of get off the ground was building a brand for Open at Lake Washington. Um, and so our OER core team developed um, the idea of being open for learning and using an open sign kind of as the symbol for us. Um, and so that really helped us because now students see that logo and they're kind of like, okay, this is what this is about. Um, or they are brand new and they're just interested because it is really catching. Um, so that's on all of our digital signage, all of our posters. We did have t-shirts made um, using grant funds that we distributed. And I'll talk a little bit more about who we distributed those to. Um, we just purchased large banners. So our college has a lot of um, indoor atrium spaces with railings where we display banners about different things going on at the college. So we're gonna add um, our open for learning banners to that. Um, and then we have an OER um, website that has the logo on it as well. So really consistently using that brand um, and using it everywhere that we can has been helpful for us. We, along with that, um, try to communicate as consistently as possible. So we do have our courses marked in the course schedule. Um, 
and face some of the challenges that have already been mentioned with that. Um, but I do send out an email to all students and all student services um, when the schedule for the following quarter goes live, when students are getting ready to register, that specifically lists all of the OER courses. And so that happens every single quarter as that uh, registration opens. Let's see what else. Um, the digital signage corresponds with that. So I love the idea of adding tabling during registration. So thank you for that idea. Um, so that'll just enhance kind of that timing. And then we do an annual event during Open Education Week. So part of what we wanted to do in terms of working specifically with students is really make sure that there was something that was active for them as opposed to a lot of the passive advertising um, and awareness building we've been doing. So we use Open Education Week um, last year, we were really cost focused, so that is the image um, in the center. We did the activity, um, similar to what Jean was talking about, about what students would have used money for. Um, we had a interactive activity where they could share how much they spent on books, um, just so we could kind of get a gauge as a college as well of where our students were at in spending. And then this year for that, we're actually going to have an open um, pedagogy-based project. So we want to develop an open student guide of the college. So we'll have a project where students can take photos um, with their phone and submit those and write about the resources they use on campus. And then the last part is engaging connectors. So again, mentioned previously, and I think um, that reiteration is because it is really powerful. Um, providing we provided information and t-shirts to advising staff, workforce development, financial aid, TRIO, student government and student programs, faculty who teach using OER, inst and instructional administration staff. And with the t-shirt, they got um, kind of the really short um, language that we've developed around what OER is and why it's um, important and impactful. And so they got both of those together. So when they wear the shirt, they're able to answer. We just decided that those t-shirts will also be worn on the first day of every quarter um, with an ask me button as well by those folks who have them so that students know who they can go to to help navigate the campus. So that just puts OER out there in another context. And then um, finally, oh, we do have a loose partnership with our student government. I do have in my notes another reminder thank you again for this webinar, to get on their schedule more consistently. But our students, when they first heard about the OER degree initiative, when we kicked off the grant, um, asked our president more about it. And so she invited me to her open forums uh, with students. And so we were able to answer their questions about OER there. And so that was a really great way to build into a system that already exists that students do expect to participate in, was partnering with the president for her forums. And then the third picture on the slide is a shout out to our advising team. Um, so those are all of our uh, uh, student advisors who wore their shirts um, during Open Ed Week last year. Hey, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love you. The stu student services is so important. Closing the loop so that students actually get in there and get registered. As yeah, absolutely. As, as Richard said, uh, um, he wears a medium. I wear a large and then just, just joking, <laughs> but they're very, those are very attractive t-shirts. Um, yes. All right. I'm going to move right along um, and um, we'll come back for questions um, at the end. And next up is Michelle Beachy from Monroe Community College um, in SUNY. Michelle? I'm not sure if I saw Michelle. Michelle, are you are you on with us today? Um, you meet, might need to unmute yourself. There she is. Um, I'm not hearing you, Michelle. Maybe you need to turn up your microphone. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, we are. Uh -huh. Okay. I guess it's my headphones are not working. <laughs> um, so I think I'm probably going to say a lot of similar things that other people have said as well. Um, it looks like we're all kind of fighting the same battle. Um, and generally at Monroe, we've been uh, marketing more of our courses for the same reason as, as uh, I think others have, that all of our, our degree pathway courses were not in place at the time 
um, that we would have been marketing. We've kind of learned now that we're get gearing up towards the end of the program, what would have been great to know at the beginning to, to do that marketing ahead of time. Um, but one of the things that we added um, last fall of 2017 is the OER attribute in our course schedule. Um, so you can see that we have a, a very easy to find um, click box. Students can just check that and um, it'll take them right to whatever courses uh, are offered via uh, OER. Um, we are having a difficulty with the very manual process of coding all of the right courses in OER. We get a lot of faculty that say, I'm teaching OER, but my course is not coded OER, or I'm not teaching OER and my course is coded OER. So we're really trying to work through that process. Um, and hopefully we can come up with something that makes it a lot easier all around for everyone. Um, but this is an easy way for students to be able to find our OER courses um, as they're registering. Um, so we've been on trying to get the word out to advisement, admissions, registration of records, first year experience, um, so that they can point this out to students as they're, they're registering. Um, we're working on putting together an informational flyer that will go into new student packets so that they will uh, also know where to, how to filter their search when they're looking for um, OER courses and explaining the little um, orange box with open educational resources, courses have eliminated or reduced course material costs. We just try to make it a simple explanation. Um, and again, you can advance the slide, Una, to the next one. It just shows as you click into the course, it also shows at on each course. Um, if they don't search via OER, it'll still show up um, on, on the general courses for all of them, right at the bottom, the um, highlighted in the orange. Um, next slide, Una. Uh, one of the great ways that we involve students, I, my, one of my biggest ways of connecting to get the word out to students is kind of a, a, the grassroots method. Um, so we employed a student to create some text covers. Uh, it was a visual and performing arts student who received credit for some of the coursework, um, putting together these. She, she took the photographs, not of the, the um, business 135 with the actual photographs, but the other ones are photographs that she used. She openly licensed all these. Um, and this was a way to get out to um, the course. We had a professor that said, hey, we, we've got some opportunities for you to get some real live work, and we're using open educational resources, explaining what that means. Um, the student openly licensed all of these. Um, so it was a great way to get some, some word out generally to students who may not have, have heard about that otherwise. Um, and we were actually able to use some of our funds to pay her to do some of these covers um, for the second half of the year. She's since graduated, so we're now shopping for another student. Um, and also using students through open pedagogy, we have a couple of professors who have included students. One's, um, an early British literature professor who created an OER text and is now using the students who are taking the course to um, write introductions for the chapters of the text and she'll be teaching it again next fall with the introductions from those students included in there. So again, hopefully another way that students are getting the word out like, hey, I worked on this, um, on this great text with my professor. Um, and again, all those future plans that we all have, that I'm sure we're all going to implement. Um, I met last week with our marketing department and um, tried to get some ideas because I think a lot of the ideas that we have, we're not quite sure how to do them. Um, but they recommended, um, we're, we're planning to, to put together a video um, marketing the degree program and have that run, they have a feature where we can have it running on Facebook for um, people who are actually on our campuses. So if they open up Facebook, that ad will pop up um, and talk about uh, our OER degree program. Um, we also have lots of dual enrollment courses, so trying to get the word out to those students who are who may be coming onto uh, our campus eventually um, to get the, the word out that there are these opportunities for um, less expensive materials for the courses. Um, I've been trying to partner with student government. I haven't been able to, to meet them uh, yet. We have two campuses, and just trying to connect with those, both campuses has not happened. Um, 
one of our other marketing ideas will be also, if someone else talked about putting a, a printed banner, we've got some central areas, areas on campus where we can get that up. Um, we also do within the library, we have um, usually uh, at least twice a month, we do pop-up libraries where we go out onto the campus somewhere and talk about library services. And when we do that, um, I usually try to talk up um, OER and what that means for students. Um, we usually try to draw them over with something fun again. We haven't tried cupcakes, we may try that. We usually do candy. Um, we also have a 3D printer that uh, is kind of mobile, so when that comes with us, it's great to just draw students over and then we start talking about whatever and you know, we get the question about, oh, do you know what OER is? Have you seen any classes? Do you know anyone who's taking any of those classes? Um, and again, we'll be, we'll be trying to get some you know, little tchotchkes together, little stress balls, pencils, um, t-shirts are, are, are a great idea as well. Um, and I did with some of the funds we have from ATD, I purchased a button maker, um, and students love using the button maker to make their own buttons, um, so we printed up some uh, OER uh, themed uh, buttons and let students print their own up and they're all excited to take them and wear them around campus. Um, some free advertising there. Um, and we're looking to put together an easy to navigate um, LibGuide with all of our courses listed so that students can just go to that and see them all listed, not necessarily on the course schedule, but um, in a way that they can just search. They can even click in and see what the, what the materials are um, easily and hopefully put that out in some of our, um, our advertising materials. So that is about what we've been up to here at um, Monroe. Very exciting. I love that uh, pop-up library. I hadn't heard that before. Fun. Um, and Edie mentions that they're doing OER pop sockets. What are those, um, Edie? Uh, it looks like Lida knows what they are, but um, uh, Edie, do you have a microphone or Lida? The round things you put on the back of the phone. Oh, I got you. I didn't know they were called pop sockets. <laughs> yes, I think I have seen yours, Kelsey. I know I'm of a different generation. My children have those. They explained it to me. It's so that you can watch videos <laughs> on your phone. <sighs> That's very fun. All right. I want to move on to um, Cheryl Lee at Kushida, who's professor at uh, Santa Ana College and also the distance education and OER coordinator there. Cheryl Lee? Thank you, Una. Um, I am so busy writing down all of these ideas because I really didn't think that we had any new ones. Um, so let me share with you what we're doing. Um, I really love the idea of the cover of the book. I'm gonna talk with one of our art class instructors and see if they can help us. Um, so talking about marketing possibilities at Santa Ana, what we did with some of our, our first ATD funds was we created the t-shirts on the left, the red t-shirts, and these have kind of been a hit and they're identifiable for, um, we gave them out when we had, held an OER summit and all of our faculty that uh, use OER got a t-shirt and now we're going to try to include more funding so that um, the t-shirts that are black, this is our new design and we're going to run with this uh, really shortly, but we wanted to promote the degree pathway, not just OER courses, but degree pathway. And what we're going to try for is in the spring for Open Education Week to have an event that's outside that we can invite our foundation members to. And our idea, you know, like all of you, is to try to <clears throat> have more involvement with administration. And for us, if we can get some of our foundation uh, members behind OER, then maybe they will uh, remember us with their foundation funds and we can give them t-shirts and we were thinking of having students that use OER also, you know, t-shirts for the students and maybe they could talk about their experiences with OER. So um, that's what we're planning to do with um, some new t-shirt funds. And every Wednesday at our college's they moved it from Friday to, because nobody's here on Friday, to Wednesday to our like um, our ASG Spirit Day or College Spirit Day. 
So um, when it has something that's SAC on it, you know, Santa Ana College, then uh, faculty might be more inclined to wear them. And I think that we need to just remind them that, you know, on Wednesday to wear their OER t-shirt, not just, you know, a, a, another college, you know, logo shirt, but that they could wear these too. So I'll have to remember to do that. Thanks, Una. Those are beautiful t-shirts. I like the black one at the bottom. The black one. Yeah. You know, I really like red and everybody said, you know, next time could you do black? So I, yeah, I, I maybe it'll get more, more wear. <laughs> Um, this, like everyone else, this is our, um, we use Colleague, and this is our um, schedule of classes online. We're going to move things around. We've already requested this of IT, but they, students can check mark if it's OER or zero textbook cost, which is um, a California uh, campaign here. And that zero textbook cost logo is, is the one that we've kind of adopted now for um, I guess in our schedule and everything, and as you saw in our t-shirt that we're kind of using for students to um, know what we're talking about when we talk about low textbook cost and OER because they, as much as instructors in one of our first OER work group meetings, we said, nobody can relate to OER, what should we do? And, and one instructor said, you know, we're teachers, let's teach students what OER means and we've tried for so long but it's just really hard and students relate to cost and that's what catches their, you know, their ear first. So I think we're probably going to go more with that other logo. Um, when a student searches on OER ZTC in the comments um, for that section, this is the type of comment that they'll see um, on OER if it's ZTC, if there's no additional textbook cost, just so that they're really aware. Thank you. And then um, I don't know about all of you, but we still have a printed schedule and it's also available in PDF, um, you know, on our website. And as we all know, it's already, it's already obsolete. We have to create it so far ahead of time for print and not all faculty have decided on OER. It is such a pain, but we still have it. And, um, so we use, I just wanted to show you in the hard copy, and then um, we've got the little logo for OER next to the class and CTC so that they know, and that other logo is for an online course or lecture. They'll know, the students can see visibly what the class is next to all the courses in our schedule. And then what I did get was in the first few pages, you know, in yours, you probably have something like, um, uh, the classes in a freshman for freshmen or weekend classes or online. Well, we have a few also first pages of all OER courses in the very front. So students that are looking only for OER, they'll be able to see those listed all together in addition to the logo for, you know, biology or something like that. So I'm, I'm not sure. We use a lot of methods like all of you, and I wish I knew what, what was successful in it. And it could be, you know, as Jean said, that marketing rule of seven, but this is one of the things that we're doing. Um, and then we took up SRI's really great suggestion. So uh, they had suggested to us for students that are currently enrolled in your OER course, um, let them know that there are more. So we are emailing students, I don't know if this is working, but we're emailing students during the semester that are enrolled in an OER course, it's kind of, you know, our just template email and we're saying, you know, we hope you are enjoying, uh, you know, and appreciating your OER materials. And then right around registration time, we send this out and we let them know, again, how to search for um, OER courses for their enrollment for next semester. Um, you know, some students have emailed, they reply back, thank you. Um, I don't know how much that's helping, but it's easy enough to do. Um, and then I wanted to include this, even though it, the students might not see it. So on our, we have an OER website uh, at our college, and then I have there that OER degree advisement uh, link. And on that OER degree advisement, I have our, what we call our plan A, B, and C, our AA degree plan, our CSU plan B, and then our I get C plan C for, you know, private new C schools. And what I do every year is I highlight the courses that are offered in OER or zero textbook cost. And I know that students can see this, but I'll tell you, it really works well for counselors. And this is how, 
I tell our faculty this as well, this is how counselors view their advisements to students. There's a lot of courses we have that aren't in any of our plans and um, gosh, you know, that's unfortunate. But when I talk with chairs or departments that are saying, oh, we're low enrollment, we're not this, we're not that, I tell them, you know what, if you are, if whatever course it is is in the plan, then if it's OER, that'll be one of the courses that the counselors will recognize and makes it stand out in terms of a course for advisement, especially for students that really need it. So um, I think that this is one of our areas that seems to be working well, and I go and talk to counseling every so often so that they're aware of this. Is that all I have, Luna? I think you had one last one. Oh, one more, okay. Um, we're really fortunate at SAC to have um, a nationally recognized college newspaper, and our newspaper is the El Don. So uh, every year they have lots of little reporters running around and, and sometimes they can be a little intrusive and they're trying to dig and find dirt and things like that. But uh, generally speaking, when they come to me and, and ask if they can do a, an article on OER, um, I happily make a lot of time for them. And so usually once a year, once every, you know, whatever, year and a half, there's an article in our school newspaper about OER. And um, they usually, and I can usually give them some student quotes, and I usually also refer them to a faculty member to interview. And then we also have our, our student posters as well. So um, in a nutshell, that's kind of what we're doing. You know, we table as well and send the flyers out and all the freshmen, you know, incoming freshmen, high school uh, packets and, and everything. Um, you know, when uh, somebody mentioned tabling at welcome events, I, I don't know if they just need more tables, but we get asked for OER to table at like almost every event, which is really great, but I'm gonna have to bring cupcakes and much more candy. But even for like Earth Day, they'll think to ask um, OER to table at Earth Day because you know they, we're not wasting paper and things like that. So we get, we get asked to table a lot, but I think I'll have to have uh, cupcakes to get more people to come to our table. So that's about all we're doing at SAC. Well, it sounds like plenty, Shirley. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, run through a couple of really quick slides and then we'll just open this up for anyone who can stay. And I'm sorry we ran a little over the hour. Um, these are the these are conferences that are coming up this month. I think you're probably aware of those and next month. Um, I wanted to mention that there's still a couple of things that are open uh, for the spring. If you're looking at presenting, uh, Fran mentioned Dream 2019, the 2020, uh, the short presentations are available. Also, the American Association of Community Colleges, the annual convention, this is a huge one. It's in Orlando, Florida, uh, April 13th through 16th. And, um, the submission deadline is next uh, Wednesday, it's Halloween. And Fran and Richard would like to say, if anyone is submitting to that, they'd love to work with you on that. Um, and um, so please do, do uh, check in with them if you're planning to submit for that conference. And it is a, it's a great conference. Um, I've, I've been at several times. Um, and there's, um, there's a few other events coming up as well, if you look at the red sign. And this also is available, the, the URL is up at the top there, um, if you want to check this out after the meeting. Um, case studies, I mentioned this at the beginning, I'd like to mention it again. We have 11 case studies from the 38 colleges at this point. Um, and I know a lot of you are finishing up this, uh, actually like this month, um, and, and deploying your degree. We'd love to document it, but we're gonna need um, you to work with us on the template. Um, we would ask that you send that information to us no later than December 15th. We'd prefer it December 1st so that we can uh, finish up and get those posted either late December or early January. So I'll send out a separate email, but please, please do share your success stories. You're all doing such amazing work. Um, uh, I'm not, we don't really have time to go over this. I think many of you are on our list. You know about our, our webinars. Um, I did want, want to mention, because there sounds like there's a lot of interest on the open pedagogy. We will have open pedagogy will be the topic of the November 14th CCCOER webinar. So please join us or, or watch the recording. 
our next um, community meeting, I think we're going to be moving that. We originally had it scheduled for Wednesday, November 28th. I think we're going to move it to the first week of December. We'll be in touch over email. I apologize for that. Um, things are just kind of in flux right now. And I think we're back to uh, any open questions. Um, and I, I know I deferred the question that came up earlier um, about what do you do when a class has been listed as an OER class or a zero textbook cost class in your, in your class schedule online, and then for whatever reason the teacher changes, um, could be a full-time instructor bumps somebody out, and they are allowed to make the decision about what the materials are that are used, and they select to not use an open. Uh, material. And that has been uh, something that's uh, been generating some discussion on a number of lists. And I don't, uh, it's, I've heard a couple of different um, responses to that. And I, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I want to let other people um, share if they would like to about that. And you can turn on your microphone or um, whatever works. And if people are too busy, we can also save it for our meeting that will probably be, be in the first week of December, our next community meeting. I'm getting the sense that folks may need to move on to the next activity of their day. So I want to thank um, all of you for coming, but especially for our presenters. I have two pages of notes I took on the amazing things that uh, everyone suggested today. And um, I, this is a wonderful resource. Um, I hope that our community continue to uh, work together on um, the actual deployment and um, of the OER degrees now that almost everyone is finished with their degree. So thanks again, and uh, this will be posted for your colleagues who didn't make it uh, probably um, by the end of today or tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, for allowing me to twist your arm, and um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day.